Hello there, welcome back to Bottles to Consider. So today we're gonna to be looking at a, a pretty quirky bottle. Um, but before we get into that, I wanted to start with something that some of you had mentioned in, in comments that you wanted a little bit more detail on. One time I talked about wanting to get sort of like bio measurements so people can understand how my body interacts with a bottle and relates to, you know, they can then measure themselves and figure that out. We're just gonna start with the one that I think might be very useful and I think will be very useful today as you'll see, which is the, the distance from your thumb to your middle finger, which I really think is a helpful measurement to have for sensing if you'll be able to grip a bottle comfortably. Here's a glass of water, but I think that's where a lot of the gripping comes in. I'm not sure. If you know more about this, please leave a comment. I would love someone who knows more about this to tell me. If you think of this as a right angle from your middle finger to your thumb, we're gonna measure kind of the hypotenuse of that triangle. So, you know, just take a measuring tape. You know, I don't think we have to be too exact for now. We're just getting started on this project, but it's about seven and a quarter, and eh, maybe seven and a half. Let's call it seven and a half inches. So if you're curious, you know, measure, measure that for you and it might give you a sense as I'm talking how far off these things are gonna be for you. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, we have a, a piece of real, you know, data to play with, like the money ball of water bottles. Anyway, we're gonna get into this bottle. I don't even know if you should call it a bottle um, or a jug or a little storage tank, but it is the Yeti. 64 ounce Rambler with a wide mouth. So yeah, this is not like what I've reviewed otherwise in terms of sort of an everyday sipping bottle. This would not be good for that for almost any case, but I think it does have some tremendous uses, some, some great uses. And it also has some fundamentals and I think illustrates a little how kind of no matter the bottle, there are some like fundamental things that the good ones have. Okay, so the elephant in the room, the 64 ounce jug in the room is the fact that, yeah, this thing is just too too big to really sip from. It's heavy. It's about three quarter filled right now and it's heavy. Um, and you know, you'll also see, again, my hand, that little number, 7.5 inches, I can hold it with one hand, but it's like right on the cusp. And I certainly wouldn't want to have to like jump off in a sprint with this. It feels like I'm like palming a ball that I can just barely get. And it's heavy and it's got a wide mouth. Drinking from it is kind of a, a little much. But, you know, its weaknesses are its strengths. It holds a lot of water. I drink more water than this in a day, but many people don't, and you can get by on this. So I think where this comes in a lot of value is if you are gonna be in some situation where you're maybe not near uh, an easy source of like running, drinking water, but you want a lot of water, especially if you want it kept at a temperature, which is a very nice luxury. Um, some of the ads for bottles like this, I feel like show people who are like rock climbing, and that makes sense you're kind of out somewhere isolated and maybe you bring one other little bottle to sip from but instead of having to bring you know five water bottles you can bring one little one that's comfortable to sip from and then this is kind of just like your storage vat of water um, in that case i mentioned also just then it makes sense because if you're going like climbing you're also probably driving because you're bringing gear so this is just more gear this would be too big to walk around with. I mean, I guess it could go in a backpack, but that's not what it's for. I'd recommend like a camelback, a, a thing built for a backpack if you were trying to hold this much water, but that's another episode. Yeah, if you have any sort of like thing you do where you're kind of isolated, you know, the thing that came to mind for me is I used to be a carpenter and in the summers, I would sometimes be in places where it's very inconvenient to get more water. I would get like a gallon jug from, you know, just wherever, from a store, a plastic jug. And it was like, if nothing else, I knew I had my water for the day. And I would usually drink it because it was just easier, depending on where I was, to, si to sip from that. 
and it just sat in a car. And this would have been a huge upgrade from that. Um, for a few reasons. One, it's leak proof. Two, it would stay this temperature. I mean, I love the thought, just thinking back to when I did that kind of thing, like, oh my goodness, if I could fill this with like icy cold water to have all day, that'd be amazing. Likewise, if you're going on like a long road trip through a sort of rural area, you know, more and more places have like bottle filling kind of stations or water fountains, but a lot of places still don't. And this might just be easier. Maybe you like, you have like a water filter at your house and you prefer that to like filling it up in the sink of a bathroom of a gas station. Or, you know, maybe it, it's also just more cost effective and like less, you know, physically wasteful than relying on just buying bottles at gas stations over and over. So for a bunch of different reasons, this could be a nice thing to have on like a road trip. I think it does open up the question then if you'd want something like this or like a large thing with a spigot. But you know, at this price point, $65 for 64 ounces of totally insulated, sealed water. I mean, that's that's pretty good. You know, maybe you don't use it every day, but a few times a month you're going on some sort of adventure and this thing is really nice to have. And then, you know, beyond the quirks, getting into just those fundamentals I was talking about, it's just seems you know, like a really sturdy, nice thing. You know, Yeti obviously has a great reputation. Um, I've been happy with Yeti products I've used. It seems totally leak proof. I really like the stainless steel and you know, you can, this has been sitting on and off in the back of trucks and cars and has been getting scratched up, but seems just like pretty, pretty heavy duty. Leak proof, insulated, sort of resistant to scratches. I think these are all like fundamentals of good water bottles that regardless of the size, you know, it's just interesting to see the things that stay the same. One thing to note, these bottles now, I think are exclusively sold with what I want to say is called a chug cap. I, as I understand it, and I hope to, you know, review those in another episode, you know, it's a wide mouth lid with then a second smaller lid that you can fit around, fit your whole mouth around. I see no reason why that wouldn't be anything other than an upgrade. The only issue would be if there was leaking now that you have two different spots where it could leak but i don't think knowing yeti's performance in my life thus far i would not expect that to be the case so i mean if that is the deal breaker to you then i would check that and i'll have the link uh, in the description to those and as always with these links if you use the links on this in this description you know, that helps me. So please consider using those links if you if you like these videos. Um, so anywho, yeah, that's the Yeti Rambler 64 ounce wide mouth. Again, in this day and age, you'll get a, a different cap that is more ergonomic for drinking. And I um, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about this one. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, if you'd like some more uh, bio measurements, um, or how, how those worked out for you. All right, thanks, till next time.